Okay, so now I will solve this problem. It is a mixing of water and cold water in a shower. So this is the mix mixing chamber you can see guys. Um, so at first we will read the question, but you look here, we have two in light in this mixing chamber. Look at the arrow, so we have two in light. Uh, the mass flow is coming this way, it is M1, M2, and the corresponding temperature is 60 and 30, sorry, 10. So, and this is actually the outlet. So two in light, one outlet here. This is the hot fluid and this is the cold fluid. So the hot water, this is the cold water. These two are just entering into this mixing chamber. They are mixing here. We said, according to the question, the if it is desired that a st steady stream of warm water, 45 degrees supplied through this outlet. We need to determine actually the ratio. When it is mixing this M1 and M2, what is the ratio? of the mass flow rates of the wood fluid and the cold fluid. So it is 60 degrees centigrade, it is 10 degrees centigrade. And we are getting, once this two fluid is mixing here, we are getting the fluid, the water is 45 degrees centigrade. So what should be the ratio of your hot fluid and the cold fluid if you want to get 45 degrees centigrade temperature water? And assume the heat loss from the mixing chamber to be negligible, so no heat negligible heat loss, heat loss it is not zero but it's negligible maybe maybe very small amount and the mixing to take place at a pressure of 100 kPa this is very important information so 150 kPa so if we start with this uh, problem we need to calculate the ratio of this wood and the cold fluid all right yeah we need to calculate the ratio what should be the ratio of the wood and the cold fluid so let's start with some assumptions here. This is very important because we can't consider all realistic aspect. So we need to make some assumptions. So the first assumptions we can say, this is a steady flow problem. So if it is a steady flow problem, that means no change of the mass and energy. So we can say delta M CV is zero, delta M, delta, sorry, delta E, delta E CV it is equal to zero. So the mass change inside the control volume, energy change inside the control volume it is zero. Similarly here the kinetic energy and the potential energy it will be you know the potential energy change it is negligible. It is negligible. So what we said um, we say it is not zero, but it is very close to zero. It is negligible. Okay, the kinetic and the potential energy. Similarly, the other assumption is, according to the question, um, the heat loss. You can see the heat loss from the mixing chamber is negligible. So what I can say, the Q, it is also close to zero. And no interactions of the world, no arc interactions involved here. So in this case, we will start with the analysis. So this is all of our assumptions. So now let's start with the analysis. You can see we considered this is a control volume. The mixing chamber, it is our system. So it is the control volume um, since as it is, a it is control volume because the mass is, you know, we have some mass interactions in the boundary during the process. Mass is coming this way, it is going this way. So this is the control volume. We know the definition of the control volume. So what we found, we have two inlet and one outlet. At first, we will do some mass balance. So if we consider the mass balance, what it will be, guys? The mass in minus mass out, it is equal the, you know, delta E, you know, delta, or you can say dm dt into the CV, the control value. It is the steady flow, so definitely the change is zero. So what we will get, the mass in, it will be equal to the mass out, right? So mass in and mass out. So we have mass in from two inlet. So that means we need to add this two inlet here, but we have only one outlet. So if I write it down, look, so we have the mass from two inlet. So what we can write, um, if we say uh, the mass, let's say this is one, this is two and this is three. So we can write this way that M1 has, uh, this is 
Okay, we should write only the M1, not Hayes. M1 plus, you know, M2, it is equal M3. This is actually the mass balance, right? Because we have mass from two inlet and one outlet. I believe you understand this. Now, if we consider the energy balance, the energy balance, it will be same. The energy in minus the energy out, it is equal, you know, D, E, D, T. So, this is for the system. So, here, as it is a steady system, so the energy change is zero. So, what we can write, the energy in, it is equal to energy out this is important now um i actually don't want to write a lot of things but for your better understanding if i write it then you know the energy balance for a flowing fluid is kind of this we previously discussed q in w in plus you know um m h v square over 2 g z equal um, q out w out and m hayes v squared over 2 and gz there you know right guys yes in this case it is a steady problem so that means that means we earlier said this you know the the q it is equal zero kinetic energy zero potential energy zero everything zero so that means here we have this term zero we have this term zero this zero this zero and the kinetic energy we said no work interaction so work this terms also zero the kinetic energy is zero so that means this is zero potential energy is zero so this term is both zero so that means we have only for this problem it will be kind of like this m has right only the, the the mass and the enthalpy so as we have two inlet so the mass is coming from two different inlets so the energy balance the energy in here it will be kind of like this m1 h1 m2 h2 it is equal m3 h3 so this is actually the energy balance here because we have only the mass energy we have only the mass energy, no heat, no work, nothing, no potential, no kinetic energy. So we have only this. And 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 here, if we want to simplify this, look, M3 equal M1 plus M2. So what we can write, it is M1 has 1, M2 has 2, it is equal M1 plus M2 and has 3. We substitute this value here, M3 equal M1 plus M2. Now we need to, our ultimate target is we really need the ratio of the mixing fluid, M1 and M2. The ratio means if the ratio of X and Y, it will be X over Y. Here, ratio of the hot and the cold fluid. So it will be M1 and M2. We know, we can say this is actually Y, the formula. So now what we will do, if we want to get M1 over M2, we are going to divide this left and the right hand side by m2 if we divide by m2 look what it will happen if we divide by m2 m2 here m2 here then we can eliminate this term m2 m2 also we can eliminate this this term here it will be m1 m2 i can write in the next phase it will be m1 m2 has one let's say it is m1 it is M2 has 1, right? Plus, it will be has 2. Equal, you know, 1 over M1, M2, and this is has 3. We earlier said this M1 and M2, it is actually what? It is uh, Y, the ratio Y. So, it will be Y has 1, has 2, 1 plus Y is 3 so we ultimately need the y this is actually the ratio y equal m1 over m2 that is the what and the cold fluid ratio so we will calculate this y so if we want to get that y we need actually 
the enthalpy H1, H2, H3. So H1 is the enthalpy uh, at 60 degrees centigrade, H2 is the enthalpy at 10 degree, H3 is the enthalpy at 45 degrees centigrade. You all know that how to calculate the enthalpy. It is from the table. But we need to understand whether um, it is the you know the the, the conditions the where our sub substance is compressed liquid or saturated liquid. If you look, guys, in the question, it is given um, the mixing to take place at a pressure of 150 kPa. So at 150 kPa, we mixing will happen at 150 kPa. We don't know the temperature. So at 150 kPa pressure, if you look here, this is actually the saturated water. So for pressure table, so at 150 kPa pressure, we got the saturation temperature is 111.35. So we can write at 150 kPa saturation, you see the saturation temperature of water, it is 111.35 degrees centigrade. That means, look here, this temperature, it is higher than this 60, this 10, this 45. So, if the saturation is happening, the mixing is happening in, at this temperature, that means all of this fluid, it is actually in the compressed phase, in the compressed, you know, um, liquid state. I can, I can draw it for you. Look here, this is, like say, this is the V and this is the T, TV diagram. So, Initially, um, it was like this, then the phase change will start like this and this. You know the phase change process. So, this temperature here, at this point it is 111.35. So, the saturation will start this state, but all of our temperature here, it is below that point. That means maybe here. So, it is actually the you know the saturated liquid state as the temperature T is less than the saturation temperature. I believe you understand this. We will discuss during the lecture. And when it is the case, we can assume, you know, a com that means it is actually compressed liquid. It is w w the, the, w you know, the water, the hot fluid and the cold fluid, it is compressed liquid. So this compressed liquid, it can be approximated as a saturated liquid at given temperature. We know the theory, the compressed liquid can be approximated as a saturated liquid. So if we want to get, why we need that? Because we need the enthalpy value, H1, H2 and H3. If we get H1, H2, H3, then we'll get the ratio. That's the answer of this problem. So what we need to do, we need to calculate the saturation, you know, the enthalpy H1. So it is actually, we can say equivalent to H F. that means the compressed liquid, uh, you know, the saturated liquid. H1, we previously said M1 is 60 degree centigrade temperature, so for 60 degree. For H2, we can say this is H F at the rate of 10 degree centigrade. And H3, it is the H F, it is 45 degree centigrade. So, we need to um, we need to use the table table A4 table A4 for table A4 when it is 60 degree centigrade temperature you know uh, the 60 degree centigrade temperature you see the the you know the um, the enthalpy is 251.18 for 10 degree centigrade temperature you see it is 42 point something at 45 degrees centigrade temperature it is 45 it is 188.4 so we need all these three value haze on haze to haze three from here so i will write it down because i already showed you so it is 251.18 uh, kilojoule per kg it is 42.022 kilojoule per kg and it is 188.44 kilojoule per kg so if we substitute all of this value in this equation here in this equation here 
then it will be kind of um, you know um, we can we can write it as like this y equal h3 if we simplify then h3 h2 h1 h3 so it will be 188 42.022 it is 251.18 188.44 so this will be 2.33 y so that means the ratio of the wet fluid and the cold fluid is 2.33 that means the mass flow rate for the hot water it will be 2.33 times than the mass flow rate of the cold water if we want to get the outlet temperature is at 45 degrees centigrade so in this question um you see, we did a lot of calculations, we used two tables, but um, the process is not that difficult. What we did here, initially we did the energy and the mass balance, From then we did the energy balance, and we know the assumption, according to the assumptions, all of these terms are zero. We write it down during, when we write down the assumptions. Then our, um, you know, the, the energy balance equation becomes like this, and then we uh, calculated the saturation temperature and we tried to understand actually whether the substance is in which state so we found it is, is the compressed liquid state but compressed liquid um, can be approximated as saturated liquid for given temperature so we uh, we have the given temperature here so we calculated the, all of these properties from table A4 so we got all of this from table A4 and then we got the Y so I think that's it